Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to just come together and study your word. We love you and your word, and we long to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I just ask that the Holy Spirit would just filter out all of that which is not true, sealing to our hearts only that which is. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hi, this is Steve again at blessedhopeforever.com. We're continuing on in our study in the book of Revelation, and we are in the section of chapter 8. Uh, I believe this will be part 22, where that we're looking at the trumpet judgments. Uh, I was thinking the other, the other night just how after I'd spent many hours looking at, at all of this and thinking about it, I, I thought just how horrible a time that this is. And of course, that's exactly how it's described in the Word and how that we all deserve what we're looking at. And then, of course, I had to correct myself on that. Uh, we actually deserve worse. And it's only by God's grace that we are in His mercy that we are spared this time of judgment. If you're not pre-trib, you're following the wrong channel. Uh, when I was 12 years old, somewhere there about 11 or 12, my parents uh, were Baptists. And, but they believed that we would go through the tribulation. They, I, I remember my my mom. We had this Volkswagen uh, bus, we called it, and it had a little sink and in a bed and an ice box in it, and and she called that uh, our tribulation van. Uh, so they actually believed that we would go through the tribulation. So we crossed the street to a Pentecostal church. Uh, you know, which we were, uh, my folks were very involved in uh, because they believed that we would go through the tribulation. And then my, my parents, for some reason, odd reason, they decided that they didn't want to go through the tribulation period, so we crossed the street and we became Baptists. I pointed out in a, I believe in a recent video how this this major earthquake that we see at the beginning, this mega quake, it's, it's not just uh, your average earthquake, but it's, I believe, uh, the, the text is showing us that this is the whole entire earth that is uh, shaking. And it'll cause overwhelming damage. You know, skyscrapers will fall. You know, it's kind of like the movies that we've seen about 2012 or other movies, you know. Uh, bridges will will collapse. Highways will be broken up. The the power grids will be ripped apart. Water lines, uh, septic systems will be broken. The the ocean will will uh, will probably churn like your like your washing machine. You know it's tidal waves. Uh, the Richter scale, you know, what they, which they use to measure earthquakes. I don't think it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be irrelevant at this point. It, it can't measure the power of a global earthquake. So the scientists won't be able to calculate the damage. I mean, it's, it's literally too much for man to measure. The next judgment is a great asteroid impact on a, a continent on land. And then we have one on the sea. And, and according to uh, some a study that the University of California did that I read that an asteroid of that magnitude would be so hot by the time it hit the ocean that it would make a large part of the ocean water uh, oxygen deficient. You know, it would simply boil the oxygen out of the, the water, out of the, a large area of the sea. So the temperature would rise dramatically uh, the hot water would kill billions of sea creatures in a very large area, and uh, uh, 
that warmed water would also provide a perfect environment for the growth of red algae or what is known as red tide. I, I want to talk uh, touch on that subject uh, just a bit more uh, because the text states different than Joel where, the, where that the moon became like blood. We're in this uh, particular text that we're looking at here, John writes that the uh, sea became blood, literally. I, I, I don't really know, I'll be honest, I don't know what to make of that because it, it, it appears to me that even, even if you had uh, every living creature within a, a third of the, of the ocean uh, die, uh, it seems to me like that the salt water would dilute that to where that you would barely notice the color red. But I'm, I can't change the text. We're told not to add or take away from the words of this book. And the, if you look at that in the original Greek, it literally says, uh, not like blood, but blood. And so I'm going to kind of leave that with you to decide where you want to, what position you want to take on that. When John said the sea turned to blood, he, he could have been describing red algae, you know, which thrives in oxygen deficient water. Uh, just depends on how you want to take that. But what they, what they say is that broken septic systems and toxic waste that's buried in landfills would leach into underground rivers that flow into aquifers that provide drinking water for millions of people. And we, of course, we know the results of that. That's wormwood, bitter, uh, many die. It says many die. Uh, the, uh, the text says, talks about springs, wells, uh, in the, in your text. Uh, it, it may not exactly mention those words, but, but it's, uh, it also, also affects, uh, underground water supplies. Revelation 8, uh, chapter 8, verse 10 and 11 predicts that many people will die from drinking bitter water. Uh, that's a, the direct consequence of a star hitting earth. Uh, wormwood, and of course that means poisonous. You know, just consider the cumulative the, the uh, cumulative effect, the combined effect of all that we're looking at in the, in the first few trumpet judgments. And it all seems to flow, not only makes sense, uh, but it, we're forced to take it literally. And what, what I, I want you to really consider here in this video is that and, and that's my position. I'm being forced to take this literally, uh, not symbolic, but literally. Even though that be the case, I want to point out a few things that I hope that you'll find as interesting as I did when I went through looking at this. Uh, and I hardly know how to put into words or describe uh, my feelings about what I, I feel like some of this might represent. Uh, I have a difficult time, a very difficult time disassociating my thoughts from what I think it might represent apart from being literal. Um, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't say that right, but, but you'll get the point I think uh, as we go along. When you have a, a land impact, a sea impact, and, and all of that, of what all that causes, and keep in mind the, the first trumpet judgment is meteor, a meteor, uh, meteorite shower. Uh, these cause fires, those fires put smoke and debris into the atmosphere, dust and, and smoke. Uh, these, uh, the earthquake, the uh, uh, these the land impact, the sea impact. When you when you consider everything that that the combined result of of all the destruction that it causes, you can easily see how that the it would cause a a, blo a blockout of the, the the light of the moon, 
the sun, the stars, and that's over a third. Uh, so we're, we're going to talk about that one third a little bit. Um, there are a few, few things I, I find interesting about that. So you've got millions of burning acres and, and wind storms, fire storms that, and I'm, I'm sure that the jet stream would figure into this. Uh, it's interesting because uh, we're looking at a third uh, and you're looking at, uh, uh, I think if we stop to consider where the heavily populated areas are, could be a band around the earth, the jet stream, it could be a, that could be the third. Uh, the middle third of the earth, where two-thirds of the world's population lives. Uh, and, of course, the result being global famine. Now, why a third? Well, it's, it's my opinion that God's just being generous. You know, uh, there's something interesting about that, that, that third, uh, one-third, two-thirds thing. If you go back to the Old Testament and you, and you look at, you know, uh, uh, kings, uh, battles that they had with neighboring tribes and stuff. Whenever a tribal nation refused to pay tribute to a king, you know, one who claimed a, a, a higher authority over the territory, it was a common practice for the offended king to attack that tribe or that city and totally destroy it. However, if the king was in a, a good mood, a generous mood, he might spare a third of the nation from destruction. He spared a third. Now it's uh, here in Revelation we're looking at a third not being spared, two thirds being spared, but uh, so it's just kind of the opposite. Uh, this actually happened during the, the reign of King David. David defeated the Moabites. They they refused to pay him tribute. And he made them lie down on the ground and he measured them off with a length of cord and every two lengths of, of, of them were put to death and the third length was allowed to live. Look at Sam, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 8. So David kills two-thirds and spares a third. God kills one-third and spares two-thirds. It's just the, the reverse. And keep in mind, David was a man after God's own heart. So, you know, God tolerated Israel's rebellion for many centuries. But when its, its cup reached full measure, God killed two-thirds of Israel when he sent his, net, uh, his servant Nebuchadnezzar to destroy them. Because God is a generous king, he spared one-third the, the survivors by putting them in, in exile, Babylonian exile. It's interesting what he said here. God told Ezekiel, a third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. Uh, a third will fall by the sword outside your walls. And a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue withdrawn sword. Ezekiel chapter 5. Uh, if we look at bear with me I got some of my notes are a little mixed up here if we look at um, yeah I believe it's Zechariah chapter 13 Zechariah said in the whole land, declares the Lord, two-thirds will be struck down and perish, yet one-third will be left in it. This third I'll bring into the fire. I'll refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord is our God. That's Zechariah chapter 13. If a, uh, if a generous king spared a third of a, of a rebellious nation back then, I mean, what can be said of, of the king of kings who spares 
two-thirds of the elements mentioned in the seven trumpets. In fact, if God justifiably destroyed two-thirds of, of, of what he destroys in the first four trumpets, uh, many, many suggest that, that life on earth would perish within just a few months. I, I don't know how true that is, but the, the, the point is, is that uh, we have a loving, gracious, generous God. Folks, we deserve much more than this. Every single one of us deserves the lake of fire. We have so many of our brothers and sisters who believe that they're going to go through this time of Jacob's trouble. They call themselves Christians, but they fail to understand that this is the time of Jacob's trouble. That Daniel's 70th week, the church is not destined to set one foot inside it at all. Uh, if you don't now let me just put it this way. If you, if you do not take the position of a pre-trib rapture, if, you don't, if that's not your view, then you've got a whole lot of explaining to do as to what we're looking at here and who all these, these, uh, these people are that we're, that we're looking at in the text. Uh, particularly those who are in heaven, falling down, worshiping God, praising God, uh, singing and playing instruments before the throne. Uh, uh, because there's certainly not Old Testament saints who aren't raised until the second coming of Christ. The truth is, folks, we're not here. Uh, these are terrible verses. Terrible not, not in the sense that, you know, uh, you know, don't... Maybe that's not the right word to use. The, these are horrifying judgments to look at. We all have loved ones and friends that we know will be uh, left behind, left behind in the sense that they were not uh, Christians. It's, it's almost hard to wrap your mind around. It's, uh, it's hard to contemplate the seriousness and the, and the extent of the destruction that will occur at this time. And folks, I believe that time is, is, will soon be upon the world. I, I want to go over a few things here that uh, I found interesting before I actually look, look, uh, well, there's, I just want to, I want to point out a few things about about what I see in the text from a spiritual standpoint, even though the, I know that these must be, at least that's my position, literal. We're, it's to be taken literal, okay? Now, I'm not going to ask any of you to agree on any of this, but all green grass burned, all. That's all. Well, what happened to a third? Why didn't he say a third of green grass? The text says all green grass, and all means all. And I can't make all mean anything other than all. We know that, that the Bible refers to the flesh as grass that withers and fades away. If you want to take that literally, fine. Don't have any problem with that. If you want to take that symbolically, well, that refers to, to flesh, all flesh. I don't have any problem with that. But it does say all. It doesn't say consumed, extinct. It says just burned. It says burned. Now, you, I'm just trying to get you to think sort of outside the box here, folks. Uh, to me, that may imply that, that, that it may be a sort of a subtle hint or message that all men are totally depraved. All right? But this gets better. Uh, we know that from Hebrews that the writer to the Hebrews, he talks about how that they regarded the blood of the covenant as unholy, okay? And then we have, in, in these trumpet judgments, we see God is really putting blood right up front, big time, in front of their face to see. So, 
and and I I don't I'm not I don't I will not claim to to be to have some inside sort of uh, insight uh, special insight into the mind of God or the heart of God when it comes to what he wrote here but it it sure seems to me like folks that that God is reminding them these people when anytime we see blood here that he's reminding them of the fact that that life is in the blood okay think about the water being polluted wormwood poison okay these folks folk <laughs> dearly beloved the folks that we're looking at here that go through these terrible times of of tribulation they're there because why they didn't thirst they didn't come and drink of the water of life freely okay therefore all fresh water sources They won't satisfy their thirst, but they will, in fact, kill them, kill many of them. You didn't like stars. Stars are messengers. Okay, stars, navig we navigate by the stars. Scar stars guide us, okay? Stars can be messengers. They can be pastors, Bible uh, teachers. Uh, so, uh, I mean, they, they guide and navigate you through the darkness. So I'll send a great darkness upon you. you. In fact, you love darkness rather than light. Okay? You want dark? I'm going to give you dark. Okay? It's interesting how the, if you talk, stop and look at the words, it's cast. Okay? You want an angel cast. Cast. And then you have a fell. And then you have smitten. The sun was smitten. The sun will be smitten. Did you know there are eight verses where Christ is likened unto the sun? And, and we know, we read in John chapter 18 where Christ said, Why smitest thou me? And the sun is smitten. That's the word that the Holy Spirit chose to use, was smitten. Now, I, I'm sure that many of you out there could... Just could justifiably email me and say, Steve, I think you're just kind of pushing the text a little too far here. I, I don't know if I am or not. I just find these, these things interesting. Men love darkness rather than light. They get darkness. Okay? God lights our path. He's a lamp unto our feet. Why should it be strange to think that perhaps God is saying, you didn't want that. So I'll grant you the desire of your heart. Complete, utter, total darkness. And then it goes, it goes beyond the human realm. These last three judgments, the first four are uh, kind of distinct and separate from the last three, which are, it goes, kind of goes into the spiritual realm. Even though it's, I believe it's still literal, and, and we're looking at war primarily in the last three, we're looking at conflict, but uh, there is a distinction that you could make there. Do not harm the trees. Okay, if you take trees as mighty men, that's you've got verses to back you up on that. Grass as flesh. Do not harm the trees, the grass, or any, any green thing. Green thing, mature. Okay, green there's, there's all kinds of, there's all, there's various colors of grass. Green, mature thing. Well, uh, folks, Christ died only once. It is for a, an absolute fact that God cannot demand twice payment. If Christ died in your place, you cannot die. Okay? Christ is not going to die again. He doesn't die repeatedly over and over again as... In some religious institutions, uh, they, they celebrate that for some odd reason. He only died once. It won't flood again. It'll never flood again. The, you know, the next time the earth is destroyed, it'll be by fire, and it'll be, uh, it'll be utterly, completely, absolutely destroyed. Uh, the bottomless pit, smoke, the sm we, see the, we, we read the words bottomless pit, smoke of a great furnace, I mean, it's hard not to, to separate your thoughts from 
from a literal hell there, even though we know this is occurring on earth, it's literal, okay? Uh, it's So you almost want to see, you know, both sides of this. This is what I'm trying to point out. Even though there's a literal, absolute literal aspect to this, which I, I can't escape, uh, my mind can't escape from the fact that, that what we're looking at is literal. There almost almost seems to be a subtle hidden message lying underneath that's, that flows throughout this whole thing, where that it's, I wouldn't call it symbolic, I would call it just, uh, uh, well, perhaps that is the right word. It, it's a, it almost, there almost seems to be subtle hints, just like I just mentioned, you know, about the water and the blood and, and so, so on and so forth. Uh, I just find that interesting. I, I can't, my mind can't separate itself from that just to simply look at it all as literal, even though I believe it is. Uh, which cannot hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing. Well, you know, uh, any mature thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So, makes sense. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Uh, we're a long ways from getting to there, Revelation 20. Chapter 9 Chapter 9, verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. Okay, let's just stop right there. When you read through this account, we know that there is no living creature on earth that's described as this is described. We know that there's a lot of symbolism here mixed in with something that is occurring which is literal. Do, do you follow what I'm saying here? Okay? Uh, scorpions don't have kings. Locusts don't have uh, kings. Okay? Uh, but there's something interesting about the five months that uh, I'm hoping to be able to point out here. It's very simple. Uh, the, I'll, I'll get to that, but at this fifth trumpet, we see that these un, unseen spiritual powers of darkness, they appear to be taking part now in the, in, in what's, what's happening. Uh, what we looked at above this seems to be more of a, what you'd call natural uh, more natural uh, or cosmic, uh, you know, earthquake, uh, uh, meteor, meteorites, uh, asteroid impacts, that sort of thing. But now we're looking at something just a little bit different, okay? It has, it is taking place literally on Earth. It's not just purely symbolic of nothing. It's, but it, it's taking place. But there's more of a, of an association with hell, okay? Uh, attached to this. Uh, the, the trees, the grass, the true believers, whether young or more mature, are to be untouched. It says, I, I want you to keep in mind that Revelation is not chronological. Okay? It's not that, well, we've seen everything in the seals we're past that. That's already occurred. Now we're into the trumpets, and it's the same with the vile judgments, the bold judgments, and so on and so forth. Uh, it is impossible to read this book, folks, without seeing it jump around. Okay, it'll it'll be you'll be in heaven at one moment, you'll be on on earth the next. Okay. Uh, it'll talk about something that that seems to precede. Uh, something else, but then, but then, as you go along, it'll it'll revert back to that. So that it's it's like it's took this and it's put it, you know, in front of you again. Are, are you following what I'm saying? Revelation is not linear. And uh, it's 
God's grace is going to keep His people from apostasy. Okay? Total apostasy at this time. Now, there's something interesting, and I've got to, I've got to tread lightly over this. There's something very interesting that I want, I want to point out here about, uh, about these uh, last trumpet judgments. There was a guy, his name was Charles Forster, and he wrote a book, and it was published in 1829. I don't even want to read the title of the book for fear that the YouTube's going to flag this video. And, uh, but in the book, he talks about how that the locust is introduced as the national emblem of the Ishmaelites. I'd have to agree. And, and it's a remarkable coincidence. Uh, I believe it's that Gosh, I don't. It's hard for me to do this without actually saying the words. Uh, so I, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Folks, Muslim tradition speaks of locusts being having dropped into the hands of Muhammad, bearing on their wings the inscription, "We are the army of the great God." Now, some of you may have, may have known that, some of you may have not, but this is fact, okay? Now, five months is the ordinary time in the year during which locusts swarm and, and are, you know, destructive. Uh, it's interesting that the usual time of locusts is from May to September. Don't read too much into that. It's, we're looking at the, the fifth uh, trumpet here. I believe. Uh, one third is mentioned in, in trumpets one and four and six. The phrase one third, you see it in, in, in the one through four, the trumpet judgments one through four, and you see it in six, but strangely, uh, the fifth trumpet makes no mention of one third. I wanted to point that out. Uh, you might want to look into that a little more deep, uh, deeper. Uh, uh, they're only tormented for five months. Five months. Uh, men will seek death and they won't find it. They'll desire to die and death shall flee from them. Okay? Now, uh, so they're sent to inflict torments rather than take life. People will, they'll, they'll consider it better to die. Uh, they'll, they'll consider death a relief, but they will not find it. The text is clear. They cannot die. They will not find it. They cannot commit suicide. That's how I'm taking that. You may want, you may, you may completely disagree with that. Oh, surely, Steve, if somebody wanted to bad enough, they could take, the text says they don't. The text says they can't. That's what this text says. And I'm not going to argue with the text. I'm not going to argue with God. God says that they'll seek death and they won't find it. That's horrifying. At a definite time, God's designated time, the right year, month, day, and hour, the sixth uh, trumpet judgment occurs. That's what that means. At His time. Uh, it's not the the uh, preterist, preterist view that well what what that means is the, the year month day and hour I, that was this was something already happening and happened at on a certain year at a certain day hour you know it's it's not what that means it's God's designated time and a third are killed by two hundred million okay two hundred million. Now, just about every Christian I've ever met, is, uh, they automatically associate that with the Chinese. Um, that's not the position of this ministry. I believe it is they are killed by 200 million of the Antichrist's army. And I've made a number of videos to explaining my position on who I believe that army, what that army is, is, is uh, comprised of. Uh, 
their, that arm, the idea, ideology of that army. So, God's people are protected from the armies of the fifth and the sixth trumpet judgments, which I believe have satanic, direct satanic ties, direct ties to hell. Uh, but in, even after this, the survivors, they could not repent. Folks, listen carefully to me. It's easy to read this and say, well, they, they, God wants them to repent. Oh, he just wishes that they would repent. Oh, he's just up there biting his fingernails. Just And, and God himself is praying and wishing that they would repent. And oh, if they would just only repent. The text says they, they, they would not repent. Why would they not repent? Because they could not repent. Okay? They repented not. Why? Because redemption is not based on man's willingness to do anything, but on, on our being one of God's chosen elect. It's a truth that Christians hate, but I'm going to say it. Okay? God's people will always repent. Okay? Always. These don't. They can't. They can't. Now, we won't see the seventh trumpet revealed actually until the end of chapter 11. That's almost two chapters later. Okay, so, so we need to take a look at what's in between there. Where the scene changes to heaven in the, in the sense is that, is, is that the time of God's wrath is complete. I want you to take notice of that. Okay? Well, how could it be? How can we read that, that we're, the, the time of God's wrath is complete? Okay, uh, verse, uh, I think it's chapter 10, verse 7, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants of the, uh, the prophets. You know, it's, we, hadn't even, we haven't seen the bold judgments yet. Are you starting to get the, the, the picture here that John's giving, being given different visions of what occurs over a seven-year period in, in, in the sense of judgments which occur by the opening of seals, the, the, the trumpets, judgments, as well as the bold judgments? It's not in succession. It doesn't unfold in succession, in, in successive order. Okay? We need to take note of that. Uh, what we see in between the sixth and seventh trumpet, uh, we see John eating the uh, the scroll, the book, uh, which was sweet uh, to the taste, but bitter to his belly, bitter, uh, and that's followed by the ministry of the death and resurrection of the two witnesses. Whoa, wait a minute! I thought that the two witnesses really came up front here. <clears throat> Do you believe me now? Uh, the, this goes, this jumps around, and not only does it does it move around in time and, and, in, and, in, and in space uh, or, or eternity, uh, but it's uh, it's constructed. I believe Revelation is laid out in such a way as to. I, I'm going to suggest this. I don't have anything to base this on. I'm just this is just the feeling that I get going through this. If God, folks, I believe if God had given us this in order, uh, where the, everything was in six, uh, 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 occurred or unfolded in successive order, then we're not seeing. We're not going to have any. Uh, we're not going to see anything pleasant all through the book until we get to the end. That's and that's quite a read. Uh, I, it's not hard for me to believe that a loving, gracious God constructed, designed these chapters in such a way, the visions that John had in such a way, as as to uh, comfort us as we go along. Okay, maybe that's uh, that's the position I'm going to take on that. 
Uh, don't ask you to agree with that, but that's that's how I see that. So the first trumpet, hail, fire, mingled with blood, uh, it's cast. It says it's cast that 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 hail, fire, mingled with blood. Uh, I agree with most uh, Bible expositors that that's uh, has to do with meteorites. It sets fires all over the place. Uh, Uh, now, what's interesting is that this, uh, how can all the green grass be burned up in the first trumpet judgment if the locusts are told later in the fifth trumpet judgment that they shouldn't hurt the grass of the, of the earth? Okay? How can all the green grass be burned up in the first trumpet judgment if the locusts are told later in the fifth trumpet judgment, they shouldn't hurt it. We shouldn't hurt the grass of the earth. Or any, you know, green thing. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna be stupid, I guess, and suggest that, that you know the literal grass does you know well, it does grow back. It does every time I burn grass, it grows back as it normally does, would, I believe, that it grew back between the first and the fifth trumpet judgment. And we don't know how much time elapsed between the first and the fifth trumpet judgment. Okay? But God clearly does not want any grass or green thing burned up at the fifth trumpet judgment. Why? Because He feels, I believe, that an important lesson in this is that God wants us to see in that the grass, which does represent flesh in the Bible, is not to suffer burning judgment twice. Okay? Now, maybe I am reading too much into this, or my feelings, too much doctrinal feeling into this, but folks, that's just, that's, God does not exact twice punishment. Doesn't. Okay. Now I understand that hell can be hell, or it could be a just you know represent a, God's judgment, which it does in Isaiah. That fire can be fire, while while also being the wrath of God, uh, judgment. You know, even our our works are tested by fire. I understand that. Uh, Blood can mean blood, yet it, it could symbolize death in all its forms, physical, spiritual. And the earth, we know the earth is a literal uh, ball, you know, of, of dirt, you know. And it's, it's, a, it's a planet. You know, it, for sure it's a planet, but it could also stand for the civilized world. The sea, where, where uh, ships sail and, and, and dolphins and whales swim, you know, uh, is definitely the sea, but it can also represent the restless masses of humanity. Read Daniel chapter 7, Isaiah 57. Trees are trees, but they do represent the pride of human greatness. Okay, you read about that in Daniel and Ezekiel. And grass is, is seen as literal in the Bible. You know, the... the, the Multitudes sat down on the grass and listened to Christ preach. Yet, it is also a term in the Bible that's used to represent people in general. Green grass, green grass could symbolize the finest of mankind, mature. A star can be a pastor, a teacher, or, or a person of great authority. You know, rivers and fountains, there's literally such things, but they could stand for sources of life-giving water, you know, or sound doctrine, sound doctrine, you know, that false teachers undermine. I did a little research on this, uh, on some of this, uh, uh, just searching Google just to find out some facts that I found interesting, I'll, I'll pass along. 
a sea impact resulting in a tidal wave. Uh, they say that the, the, the asteroid that killed off the dinosaurs, and that's pretty much the accepted view nowadays, was roughly six miles across. It hit leaving a crater of 110 miles across. Okay, it takes 44 miles to drive across L.A. or through L.A. from north to south. 44 miles. So if you drove through it twice, you'd still have to drive 22 more miles, 22 more miles. Uh, for your uh, the, your driving distance to be equal to the diameter of this crater, or to put another way, if you if you just got in your car and you cruised at a steady 55 miles an hour, you'd be driving for two hours to to traverse the diameter of that crater. There's roughly 140 million square miles of ocean. I googled this, 140 million square miles of ocean. So one third would be about 47 million square miles of ocean. And so I, I, I wanted to, to get it a comparison there. So I, I Googled the size of the Atlantic and Pacific. The Pacific was a little more. The Atlantic is 41 million square miles, uh, 6 million miles more than the, the uh, uh, well, it's, it's roughly, just, just think of the Atlantic Ocean as being, you know, the, the comparative size. There's roughly 60 to 70,000 ships. I, I estimate if you count merchant and military and, and a few private yachts or whatever, 60 to 70,000 ships. Okay, that's not counting really all the little boats. But, uh, or, but uh, so at one third, we're looking at roughly 22,000 ships destroyed. 22,000. Well, I googled how many ships were sunk in World War II, 1,500. Does that put it into perspective? Well, folks, I hope that this video has helped you uh, uh, in some way, giving you something to think about, and uh, encourage you to spend more time in this book. I hope that above all else, that if, if nothing else, it, it does that. Um, it's a wonderful thing and a wonderful privilege to just to be privileged to study his word, to spend time in this book above all else. It's, it's, uh, it's more than just a fantastic hobby. It's, it's a longing. It's a desire. Our Bibles should be like a magnet that just draws us into the love and the, the mercy and the goodness and the, the grace and the wonder and the, the might and the, the, the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Please continue to pray for me, for my, my health, uh, for the direction of this ministry. I want to thank you for all your comments, your love, your support. Until next time, this is Steve. Stay, stay safe out there. And thanks for watching.